What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. I know a lot of these videos focus on web development, but today I wanted to talk specifically about website design. So I'll share the process I'm going through to find my personal design style and share some web design trends I think will be popular in 2021. So let's jump right in. So at the start of 2020, I decided to focus specifically on website design and cut out all other design services from my offerings. So I worked on lots of websites and I had basically was pretty inspired by agencies like Cuberto. So rounded buttons, bright colors, very empty, minimal design, a lot of times clean sans serif fonts. And whatever the company's brand colors and fonts were, I pretty much relied pretty heavily on that, used that throughout the design. Um, there's nothing wrong with this style whatsoever, but one thing I did notice was a lot of other work out there looks just like this. So it doesn't cut through the clutter. It doesn't really get noticed that much um, because it's very uh, safe. It's the safe option. So I did a lot of work like this. And then about halfway through the year, I decided to try something new. And I started trying to create work that would hopefully start to stand out a little, that would have unique typography or something or different types of layouts that weren't just what you would typically expect to see from the web. And it definitely was a little bit harder to start working with some of these layouts, but I found it very rewarding. And a lot of these sites are, that I worked on were definitely far from perfect, but were, they were kind of the start of trying to venture out and find different styles that are different from what we see um, everywhere on the web today. So this is the first big project I got for the agency I work for. And um, it was basically to design an internal uh, culture manual for 368. Um, and basically what we believe at 368 is if you sum up our work in one word, we want it to be uncommon. Uh, that's the word we use. We want it to stand out and we have a whole checklist of what defines uncommon work and how, what does that look like for us. Um, but we don't want it to be what you would typically expect. We want to challenge the status quo. And this was the first project that I really got to work on and make fully interactive. And I started venturing out with some of these grids and outlines around things and I really fell in love with the style. So I started to use it a lot more in different projects. And I think part of why I liked it so much was the left brain side of me really <laughs> enjoyed how easy it was to just define like maybe a five column grid and then just fill in all the boxes with different colors and shapes. And it kind of lend it towards this almost retro style where now I was introducing more than one color in the design. Um, and I was able to introduce more animation and different sort of styles that made it sort of unique. So these were some projects that I took on and started building out in this style and I really liked it and a lot of my work started to pretty much look um, like this. And I think that was fine for 2020. Where I really want to go in 2021 is take this and basically evolve it, evolve this style to where it's a little bit more, maybe slightly less playful, maybe a little more um, mature would be a word that I want to use and has possibly a little bit more character to it. So basically the grown up version of everything I've done so far, <laughs> that's where I kind of want to evolve the work in 2021. So I've been looking at um, a couple different agencies. If you browse like the popular designers on Dribbble, you'll notice they all pretty much have their own particular design style. All their work looks uniquely like them. And it's pretty neat that clients will actually approach them for that style because that's what they've become known for. Um, so for this year, I actually decided to take a break from freelance work and focus on growing my YouTube channel. And I'll also spend that time to venture out and try different design styles and hopefully find one that kind of resonates with who I am and be able to use that. But in doing that, I've also looked at a bunch of other agencies of what they're doing this year. And I noticed some trends that we're already starting to see happen that I would like to share. Um, so the first one is Halo Lab and Halo Lab does amazing work. But what I really admire about their work is that it's all very unique. They're not afraid to be weird or to be different and to cut through the clutter. Um, if you look at all their work, the topography they use is very like has a lot of character to it and like the embellishes on it um, really stand out. So they're not afraid to use different sorts of typography to make a statement which I think is really smart. 
Um, another thing that we'll start to see as far as typography with a lot of character, but you've probably seen the oval and the half oval. We're seeing these everywhere and it's a nice uh, kind of refreshment from sort of square photos and everything's so boxy on the web a lot of times, but by breaking it out in these different oval shapes, um, we're seeing a lot of character happen there. We're also seeing um, different shapes like stars and different shapes like sort of brutalistic shapes, I guess, being inserted into some of these cleaner designs. And it's really nice, as well as lots of different colors within. So this is another agency called Heartbeat Agency. And we're seeing them use kind of some of the same things. We're having some of these different shapes and sort of brutalistic shapes that we have throughout, but we're also seeing gradients that sort of are blurred and overlapping each other and sort of meshed together. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that in 2021. Um, we're also seeing a lots of use of thin lines because as screen resolutions uh, get better and we're able to see these on more and more screens, people are upgrading, uh, you're able to introduce some of that. And it's really neat how a lot of these use those lines to bring about character in the design, whether that's how they underline a link or even um, different th things throughout, like this line in the hero, just sort of swerving about, introduces a lot of character into the design. Um, we're seeing a lot of photos whenever we use photos being cut out of the, their backgrounds in the hero, and lots of just very clean um, background colors, flat background colors a lot of times that can be used throughout the whole page or the whole site. And we bring character in through the photos, through the gradients, different things like that. So I really admire this style by Heartbeat. Another one is Claw. And again, we're seeing a lot of the same things. Um, lots of lines that introduce character into the design. We're seeing lots of gradients. And of course, who could forget the oval shape <laughs> that we're, we're seeing everywhere. What's nice about a lot of these designs, though, is they're not just using your typical sans serif font that we see everywhere. Their sans serifs really have a lot of character and they really make this whole design. So when every designer is using free fonts like Google fonts or Adobe fonts, which honestly aren't bad options, um, it's hard to stand out though because everyone's using those same free fonts. So sometimes by investing in a little bit of t paid typography, um, you're going to get something that's truly unique and that's just different overall. So I really like these as examples of where design could go in 2021. Um, another one is Nikolai or Nicolo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, but he has a really amazing design style that uses a lot of WebGL and 3D on the web. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that in 2021. So it's already become really popular, but the ability to actually interact with 3D is amazing. And um, I would say a lot of the requests I'm getting for different projects that come through, one of the first things uh, different people are asking is, do you know WebGL? So we're definitely seeing that that's becoming pretty popular, the ability to interact with 3D and even just flat shapes. A lot of times um, flat shapes like images can warp with WebGL into like a full screen view, um, like we'll see on maybe some of these. So. My goal last year was to learn JavaScript and I was able to start doing that. I think this year, um, a pretty big goal would be, if possible, learn WebGL. So look into some different courses because I think that's going to be a high a skill that's in high demand this coming year. Um, but yeah, if you look at his sites and a lot of the ones I've shown you today, they're actually built in Webflow. So there's no reason why things like this can't be built out in Webflow. And a lot of the ways I check that is actually behind the URL. I just type the word question mark and the word edit and hit enter. And with that question mark and the word edit, you'll usually see that this Webflow editor bar pop up at the bottom. So if it was a site they decided to host themselves apart from Webflow, you wouldn't see this. You could possibly inspect the code, but this is usually a pretty easy way to see if a site is built with Webflow. And a lot of these are. Um, another thing I do is if I find a site that I really like the typography of, I'll use this Google Chrome extension called What Font, and you can click on any font and sort of get the name of those fonts. And what's nice about that is then you're able to go to the sort of the foundry that created the font 
and they'll have other ones very similar to it where you're able to explore a bunch of different styles. Another place I like to go for looking for a type is just Behance because you're able to see the fonts and context, usually within a greater design system. So you'll see if it sort of works for the style you're looking for. Um, so where to go for inspiration in 2021? If you haven't added the Muesli extension yet, be sure to do that. Um, every day there's fresh sites on here using WebGL, really uh, unique typography. A lot of these trends we talked about, you'll see on here. And um, it's really easy to browse. Another place that I've been looking is actually Awards YouTube. If you subscribe to them, you'll see these live design reviews. It's really nice because you get to see these trendy websites, but you're also seeing the reasons behind the decisions they made, why they chose those decisions. And a lot of the trends we see actually stems from these type of sites that we see on awards and different places like that. So that's where I would look for uh, different trends in 2021. If I left any out, be sure to put them in the comments below. If there's a trend you think you'll, will be pretty popular in 2021, put it down there. If there are some agencies you think are really cool, doing amazing work, uh, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. One last thing before we go, if you haven't yet, check out the Tricks Patreon page because we're doing uh, live design hangouts. Uh, I would say almost once a month at this point, we've been doing it. Um, and then we're also doing JavaScript lessons. We're doing uh, unique interaction tutorials. So you can find all that on the uh, Tricks Patreon page if you would like to become a Webflow wizard. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.